Hey guys, how is it going on? Shin Gami Sammy to do a review on Boku no Hero Academia chapter 107. Now guys, let's talk about what actually happened in this chapter. First of all, as usual, Horikoshi likes to, you know, give us the focus on those other on those other characters. And that's what I love about it. That's what I love about it. And this is what we get to see in this chapter. Kaminari Denki. The title dedicated to Kaminari Denki. Um, yes, yeah, so I loved it in my opinion. I really did because if we actually um not think about Kaminari Denki as the traitor, let's just think of him as a normal character. Um, it's really awesome because I, I feel like his role, his character role, or the way that he's been presented throughout these hundred odd chapters, he's been presented as a derp, literally as a comic character. And that's obviously because of his quirk, the disadvantage of his quirk when he over exceeds the what limit, so what can you expect? But we didn't really have any depth to him, and I was really surprised by the fact that even though we had a, la had a lack of depth, a lack of, um... Um, what's the word? A lack of, um, you could say focus on, on him, of Horikoshi showing him to us a lot. A lack, a lacking of that, yet, he was still quite high in the rankings most of the times. Like, he was very, he was a very popular character by the fan base. So maybe it was his quirk coupled with his character design, but all in all, he was a really enjoyed character. A lot of people love him, yet we didn't get, we didn't know a lot about him. So when we did get this chapter today and I was reading it, it really did feel refreshing and I really did like it, especially um, the part when I was focusing on him because I was just like, yo, this is Kaminari Denki, we're getting a bit more about him. So, yes man, I love this chapter. So, Hatsume, even though Hatsume appeared through, you know, those panels that Horikoshi likes to do, the little flashback kind of um, panels which, you know, give us insight. Hatsume, man. Horikoshi sticks to his word with what Hatsume's teacher said. Um, power load or something. Of what was it? Chapter 100? Or 99? Or 101? Or 102? One of those chapters, um, power load was just like, she'll become very important to you. And that was obviously Horikoshi speaking through power load and saying, yeah, um, Hatsume is going to be one of those main, not one of the main characters, but she's going to have more focus in just throughout the entire series of Pokemon Heroes. She's going to be stepping up a bit. And we see it. We see how the impact that she's been having on like Kaminari and all the other students because she's obviously not just developing um like their what's the word not only developing their costumes but they're also she's also helping them grow you could say in a sense so Kaminari I really did like his costume kind of thing at first when I first saw that I was thinking hang on is that going to be some electric kind of sword because it looked like it it looked like the hilt of that you put on it and then outwards comes like an electric sword and lightning and all that kind of stuff so that's why I thought it was at first and that would have been beast but um no it was kind of point and shooter thing now this is still pretty cool it's extremely strategic and it's very good for him in a in a um, environment where there's a lot of civilians, an environment where there's a lot of heroes. Because think about it, what is Kaminari's Denki's quirk? All he can do is just exert electricity, all he can do is just release it, and civilians and heroes can get in the way. That's what we saw in the Villain Alliance where Momo had to put the insulator sheet, because Kaminari, because Kaminari cannot really control the um, effect and the range and the area that it disperses out of his quirk. So, he uses this pointer and shoot, and basically, it shoots out a disc. I'm not sure if the disc... It, it, it seemed unclear in the manga, but I'm not sure if it's, like, levitated in the air or it sticks to something. But he shoots it out to a specific, a specific place. And anything in between him and that pointer, when his, his electricity goes through it. So, basically, this guy, his name was Sh Shikiri... Sh 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 Shikura? Or something like that. Something sagey, something like that. Um, I'll put it in the description below. But, um... He got in line of that pointer and then he got shot by Kaminari because Kaminari was able to, when, wherever the pointer goes, he can aim his electricity and it'll go straight to that pointer and the guy was in between it, so bam, he got fried. So I really did like that, it was very strategic, very in intuitive, very, um, uh, what's the word, inventive you could say, I was going to say in ingenuous, ingenuous, I, I pronounced that incorrectly way incorrectly but it doesn't matter it is what it is um yeah it's a really cool um nifty 
upgrade to his costume. So I, I really did like it. And it's I, I've realised, and I don't know if Horikoshi is going to go down this route. Um, because I'm not sure how I would feel. I would like it, but I would probably prefer the other option, which I'm about to say in a couple of seconds. It seems like Horikoshi is expressing a lot of focus on costumes or like gear or like machine um costumes and stuff to help their quirks now i do like that but i would wish you know natural i would wish a natural upgrade and a natural progression for example we see deku's um deku's uh, no i think deku's a poor example who else could we see um someone that it, it enhances their quirk i'm trying to think what student has a part of their costume which enhances them? Um, yeah, okay, fine, let's just use Deku. Deku the Iron Souls. Stuff like that. I would like for him to... Obviously, in the future, he would obviously have the strength to do that. But, um, yeah, I, I'm just wondering what Horikoshi is thinking about. With, like, is he planning to go in more depth of the importance of, you know... The machines and this and the importance of the costumes and the upgrading of the quirks through the costumes and stuff like that. I don't know, it's quite interesting. It's something that is not typical. It's something Horikoshi's weaving his own path, so I like that. Now, um, we find out this guy's quirk and his name, I think his quirk is called Meat. What is Meat Joint or Meat Squash or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a little bit weird. I said it in the last review and I know a lot of people have been talking about how weird it is. Um, people were theorizing it being a body compressed quirk or something like that. So basically, he can, I wouldn't say amputate, but yeah, he can effectively amputate part of his limbs and all that kind of stuff. And it will come out with massive, you know, fingers or massive parts of his body um, external to him. And with that, he can kind of control, he can weave them around and control them and move them. So, who, whatever touches those fingers, whatever person touches those fingers or those hands or whatever, they are moulded into this into a rolled up ball, into like a meatball. Um, now we're not we're not sure about if if they are hurt whilst doing this. All he says is that they can still feel pain. So I doubt that they'll be hurt hurt whilst they're moulded and folded because first of all that'll just be very morbid it'll be very you know a bit dark I'm, I'm, i've just been thinking damn is this guy seriously a hero but um yeah and i'm wondering how they would feel because just picture it imagine that happens to you surely what would you be thinking right now like your your knee is right here your knee like all over the place like the thoughts going through your mind at that point in time would just be like you go crazy like flipping heck um but yeah in this chapter we do find um a release to the quirk and it's when he's dealt enough damage um maybe him by dealing enough damage it takes his focus off it like he's not thinking about it does he have to continuously think to have this activated i don't think so i just think when he's dealt, dealt enough damage that's when it um un it undoes so yeah that's pretty good that's very it's a relief because i was seeing it in the last chapter i was thinking what the heck's gonna happen to Kaminari? um so yeah, honestly, while I was reading this chapter, I was a little bit um, scared because Bakugo, he got compressed into this. I was just like, no, not you, Bakugo, not you. Um, but he got out of it. All thanks to Kaminari. So Kaminari done very well in this chapter. I'm really happy with that. Now, um, I want to talk about... I want to touch very briefly on what Kaminari was talking about, how he was talking about his friends and that. And it's so true, because, like, you're seeing these chapters, you're seeing, like, people from Shiketsu. Everyone's got their misconceptions about UA, everyone's got their thoughts about UA, but they truly do not know what the characters have been through. Picture it with Bakugo, everyone thinks Bakugo's very proud, well, he is, but, you know, like, very brash and unintelligent and very impulsive but that is far from it back and go is smart he thinks through his plans he's strategic he's as smart as smart or even smarter than deku i would say um and he's a very he's a master tactician as well he is not stupid in his fighting style if you see him fight he's actually thinking when he does this i mean he was fighting deku right at the start deku even realized this um so yeah, I really did like that. The fact that even in this chapter, Bakugo wasn't going full force because he knew he didn't want to hurt any of the other students. So we see that change in Bakugo's character. And I do like his new, um, one of his new special moves, um, AP Auto Cannon, how it compresses and it's a much a smaller, but a less um, 
less harmful attack, so that's pretty cool. Oh, um, I just wonder what other special move Bakugan may have up his sleeve, and we'll probably find out in the next couple of chapters. With the next chapter, we do see a new, um, the new round coming, and I'm happy about that, because I'm liking the pacing of this. We're going, finish round one, going on straight to the other. It's not really a cool down in between the rounds like we got through the sports festival. Um, yeah. Yeah, through the sorts of all. So, um, it seems like we're going to go through, in and out, in and out, not in and out, sorry, we're going to go, yeah, through the rounds very consecutively, consecutively, um, and very quickly. So it doesn't seem like there'll be, like, a, a chapter or two bef between each round. That would have slowed down the pacing a little bit and have slowed down our hype and excitement. So the next round's going to be extremely interesting with these old, um, people. It seems like some of them are quite young, the short ones. But, um, yeah, I'm very interested in this. I'm not... I wouldn't say, like, I'm extremely hyped for it. I'm just intrigued. Like, what... I, judging by... If we had to just, you know... If I had to assume it, just see... By stereotyp... Not stereotypically. But just by assuming by typical shonen tropes and just typical stories. They would obviously be extremely strong. So are we going to be going into a round where they're fighting them? Um, like, it'll be like each person, each one of those elderly, they'll be fighting like four students or something like that. I'm not really sure. It seems like, I feel like this will be a battle, kind of like an actual fighting run. Like, not like round one rails, like you have to hit the balls on them. I think this one will be more like, you know, hand to hand, kind of using your quirk combat, something like that. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I'm really, Horikoshi, his, um, his training, uh, his training stuff are really, really cool. And it's not necessarily always just fighting kind of 1v1 uh, things. Now with Deku, man, um, yeah, I want to address this kind of briefly. Um, so one of the third, I think it was a third year student, and he was talking about how, oh, this may be like my last shot, or like people, us third years, we don't really have many other chances to get our provisional. And Deku was just like, yeah, me too, and he still um, takes him out. So I'm really interested in this, because it kind of shows you, first of all, this is where a lot of people um, may see this just and look at it at face value. Now, this shows that Deku's just like, yeah, I've just got an unbelievable... It just shows you the drive that Deku has and Deku will go do whatever it takes for him to, you know, um, become a hero. Because we've seen it throughout the series, Deku's a madman. He's an absolute madman. But, um, yeah, he'll do anything to become a hero. But, like, where's his limits? Where will well where will he stop? Think of it. This is one of his comrades. You could argue, it's one of someone. It's just a, it's a fellow hero who this hero must have the same dreams as well. Yet he will allow him. He will allow people to sacrifice their dreams for him. So where does the limit stop? Where will Deku um see uh view something as being? Yeah, I can't go that. I, that's where I stop. Like. I know I want to become a hero, I know I want to pursue this goal, but some things I just won't do. And when I was reading this chapter, in my shoes, as I was reading this and I was pitching myself in there, personally, I wouldn't have done that. I would have let, I would have, first of all, if you, I'm a nice guy. I'm a really nice guy, so I would have, knowing me, I would have not took him out. I would have not put my ball um, on one of his targets, to be honest. That's how I felt when he was doing the chapter, and that's what I thought Deku was going to do as well. So the fact that he did, he did um, take him out, that did surprise me. And it showed you what is his, like, what's going to be his limits? Where, 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 where will it stop? So, um, yeah, this chapter was amazing in my opinion. Every book in the hero chapter is awesome. So next round, we're going to be getting straight into round two. All of UA pass. I really did love the reference to Kotsukame in Mineta's eyebrows. That's pretty cool. Shows you the respect. 40 years. Unbelievable. So please don't forget to comment below. If you liked anything that I just say in this review, please drop a like. That'd be great. I'd appreciate it. Sorry, guys, for doing it, for this review being extremely long. Um, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. So please don't forget to comment below. And I'll see you next week with that greatness. That is chapter 108. What do you... Um, to enforce what I was talking about at the last at the end at the end of the video when I was talking about you know Deku and his drive and the things that I was going to going through um what he done actually so please tell me in the comments below about that um and I'll see you next week for that greatness that is chapter 118 and Sam peace out and goodbye.